Okay, sourdough crumpets. Now you can either make this from the discard from feeding your starter, or as I have here, I've made up a purpose crumpet batter. And to do that, I used 150 grams of starter, which I fed with 300 grams of a plain flour that had a protein content of about 11%, and 300 grams of water. I fed that the night before and left it out for about 15 hours. Now the other ingredients I've broken down into percentages of the starter weight because I find it a lot easier to scale the recipe like that. So we've got 0.5% of bicarbonate of soda, that's 3.75 grams. I've got 0.75% of sea salt, that works out to 5.6 grams. And if you want to add sugar, I personally don't, but if you do, then 1% works out perfectly. And in this instance, that would be 7.5 grams. And then we just need to give it a good stir. We need to make sure that the bicarb and the salt are well distributed through that batter. Now I've tested this recipe several times and I've tried various different types of flour and I can tell you, if you use a high protein content, anything 12.5% up, you are gonna end up with quite a glutinous batter which can be tricky to get into the ring. So for me, you're better off using something like an all-purpose flour with a protein content of around 10 or 11%. Now this is great for using discard up if you've been feeding your sourdough starter, but just bear in mind, if it has been sitting around for a few days and isn't that active, you are gonna need to adjust your expectations accordingly. You may not get quite as much rise out of these. Now I love cooking these in a cast iron pan, but if you haven't got one, no worries, then you can definitely use a non-stick pan. Something with a heavy base works best. Now this has been heating up on heat number four out of nine for the last 10 minutes. I'm gonna lightly oil the surface of the pan and even though these are non-stick rings, I'm just gonna give them a quick oil as well. Now finding the right heat for your stove and your pan is key. Otherwise you're gonna end up with a crumpet that just isn't cooked on the inside. Try not to overfill the rings. I've probably put a touch too much in these. You wanna hit the sweet spot at around a third full because these are gonna rise up to the top of the ring as they cook. Right, time to get them on the heat and let's get these cooking. Now the heat you choose is really, really important because we need this crumpet to cook virtually to the top before the base becomes overcooked. And here you can see all of the air bubbles that travel up through that crumpet as it's cooking. And that's what gives it that lovely open crumb structure and where all of that butter and toppings kind of disappear and drip through. And for me, this is what gives the crumpet its kind of signature identity, all of those lovely air pockets that develop as it's cooking. Now you need a bit of patience to cook these. It's super important that you don't try to rush it. These took me about 14 minutes to cook on the first side. Now times are gonna vary for everybody, but here you can see the point at which we want to remove the rings and flip them over. They have just started to go hard on the top. It's really important that you do not remove these rings until they've finished cooking on the first side because they act like a little oven and contain all of the heat and that's what's gonna help this crumpet cook properly around the outside and through to the middle. Resist the urge to add any extra butter or any extra oil to the pan. There's enough residual oil in this cast iron pan just to finish toasting them on the other side. These took about another two minutes to cook on the top. Most of the cooking is done on the other side. Really, this is just to make sure that top surface is cooked through and we've got a nice crispy texture. And that, my friends, is how you get a sourdough crumpet that's got a beautifully textured base, a nice pillowy, soft and well-cooked center and a cratered and textured top. This is the ultimate sourdough crumpet. This is a great little recipe and if you're making lots of sourdough products, this could be the perfect recipe for you. But right now I'd like to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.